an elderly man presents with the blurring of the vision continuing our discussion on aims made 2017 the fundus shows cotton wool spots and uh, decreased peripheral sensations and the renal biopsy has been shown what are these nodular lesions basically called as these are called as the kimmelstein's wilson's lesions is what you need to basically remember so one point i want to tell you if there is an nephropathy in a diabetic individual nephropathy can be because of many reasons even in a diabetic individual there can be some other pathology leading to the renal involvement how are you so sure that this nephropathy is diabetic nephropathy only you have to look at the fundus agar fundus mein retinopathy changes are not there then the nephropathy is not due to the diabetes so diabetic nephropathy occurs only if retinopathy is also there but diabetic retinopathy can still occur in the people without nephropathy that is the important jugal bandhi between nephropathy and uh, retinopathy please don't forget yes now a 43 year old facial puffiness frothy urine acute kidney injury suspected you have done a electron microscopy what is your likely diagnosis and what are you seeing in the electron microscopy is the question of the examiner as i am telling you without a question on glomerular nephritis aims need pg nahi hoga nahi hoga so glomerular nephritis is one topic in pathology you don't get time to read any other topic also read only glomerular nephritis and go you are assured of a couple of marks so it is a membranous glomerulopathy membranous glomerulopathy is the most common cause for the development of nephrotic syndrome in the adults just like minimal change disease is the most common cause of the nephrotic syndrome in the case of the children is what you need to basically remember <clears throat> how do you clinically suspect that your patient is having nephrotic uh, membranous nephropathy is there any way to clinically suspect is my question to all of you generally nephrotic syndrome means you find about 1 g proteinuria or uh, 2 g proteinuria if it is due to any other uh, lesion like minimal change disease but if you are having a proteinuria as big as 7 grams 8 grams you should suspect the possibility of membranous nephropathy that is the most important rule you should never forget number 2 whenever membranous nephropathy pathology is there in the kidney what is the most important underlying diagnosis you should look for most of the times you have to look for underlying lymphoma lymphoma presents itself as a membranous nephropathy presenting as nephrotic syndrome that's the reason never leave a case of membranous nephropathy just like that you should look for a internal malignancy most commonly a lymphoreticular malignancy is what you have to basically remember now these are the normal glomerular capillaries which are having thin wall then this is the thickening of the capillary walls and this is how the membranous nephropathy with a thick capillary walls typically presents like is what you need to basically remember so capillary walls are thickened there are immune complexes of immunoglobulin g and complement c3 and there are sub epithelial granular deposits into the glomerulus and on the basement membrane there are spikes between the deposits which is a classical feature that characterizes the membranous nephropathy is what i want to underscore to all of you so today only you call glomerular nephritis as a topic of the evening of this november 
today is what 7th or 8th 9th so november 9th evening ka aaj ka dinner buffet mein what are you going to order glomerulonephritis so go to the nitbhmedicine.com and also to the new medico whichever is easy review the glomerulonephritis video on the theory based high yield topic review and go to the dnb question bank and check out all the questions on um, glomerulonephritis play a quiz on the glomerulonephritis get 8 by 10 score that is how you are sure that i am insured for the topic of glomerulonephritis in the tomorrow's exam you have to be 100% sure now the most common cause of the nephrotic syndrome in the adults is the membranous glomerulonephritis and typically sub epithelial immune complex deposits you should be doubly sure fine granular pattern of the igg and uh, c3 and the thickening of the glomerular base membrane is a classical feature which you need to remember now doctor a 70 year old male intractable diarrhea his bone marrow and the renal biopsy has been shown what is the most possible likely diagnosis you can see a lot of material is being deposited over here and the bone marrow had also been given to you so considering this what is your diagnosis there are a lot of plasma cells in bone marrow and uh, plasma cells increased density in bone marrow is a indication of multiple myeloma when do you call um, multiple myeloma what is the definition when the plasma cell population is more than 30% of the bone marrow population all cellular population that defines the multiple myeloma same time you are also finding the presence of the myeloma kidney which has got the deposition of all that congophilic material is what you are able to see so if you look at the injury of the kidney it can be broadly divided into tubular injury interstitial pathology and injury in the tubular typically light chain cast nephropathy like myeloma kidney light chain cast get deposited in the kidney distal tubular dysfunction or proximal tubular dysfunction like fanconi syndrome where there is a amino acid urea and uh, proximal tubule dysfunction is what you typically see because proximal tubule is the place where all the amino acids glucose fully reabsorb the body the kidney doesn't let them to be lost into the urine so proximal tubular dysfunction is also called fanconi is what you need to remember then interstitially you can have plasma cell infiltration or the neutrophilic infiltration into the interstitium then called interstitial nephritis is what you have to basically remember that's good ravi asks a good question multiple myeloma single myeloma monoclonal gammopathy of unknown significance and uh, heavy chain disease and a smoldering myeloma so these are all the various uh, subclasses of uh, myeloma so click keep punching some nice points that comes to your mind like uh, kriya tandava's cartwheel or um, amyloidosis by kartik or eccentric blue nucleus of the kushbu so please punching some points parallelly you know that is not a disturbance to the others it is something like a spot recollection that is how you should be ready for the exam the whole purpose is all the cheddi mates meet together in the medical college and uh, we are all preparing for entrance exam and that guy knows two three points this guy knows two three points and all of us meeting and then having a cup of chai our chai pe charcha so that is all required in uh, winning the entrance and not only winning entrance tomorrow when you start clinical practice also suddenly you require an anesthetist to come and help you one of your friends will come to rescue you in an emergency if you are running a clinical practice it's all the group practice so be yourself like a group clinician a group of practitioners one cardiologist one neurologist one acute care guy one surgeon together and you have got a problem case which is the mcq which is before you and you give an input on what best that you can do on that particular uh, 
given situation that will increase your memory like anything whole purpose of preparation for exam